Numerical Computation, Chapter 4, Video 10. In this video, we will look into some advanced algorithm, which is adaptive, and we will design an adaptive method based on Simpson's rule. So from the error analysis we have done, especially the error uh, on each sub-interval, the local error, we have the observation that the local error is large when the function changes a lot, that is, where the derivatives of the function f is big. So when we use uniform grid, we distribute the grid in a uniform way. But since the derivative of f is not uniform, then the error is not evenly distributed. Therefore, we waste effort in the region where f changes very little, we could have used a coarse grid, we get high accuracy, and then we wasted effort by throwing many fine uniform grids. So here comes in the idea of adaptive grids. That is, instead of using uniform grids, we allow the grid size to vary and in the region where f, f derivative changes faster, we will put smaller grid size and more points and for the region where f changes little and we allow a bigger grid size and fewer points. Such an idea can be applied in principle to any methods. So to fix the idea we would illustrate this through the Simpson's rule. Now consider an interval we denoted a b and this is actually already a sub-interval. And the interval length for the Simpson rule h is b minus a over 2. It's because we cut it into further two small pieces. And the Simpson's rule, which we are familiar with, written out on this sub-interval at this basic level is just h over 3, this value, times um, the summing of the f evaluated at the left, middle, and right point with the coefficient 1 for 1 multiply with it. And the basic error analysis at this local level we have, which is 1 over 90 negative h to the fifth times the fourth derivative of f evaluated at some cosi, cosi lies on the interval between a and b. Now, since we do not know the exact location of the cosi, we do not know the error. We ju this is just um, kind of an estimate. But anyway, we have this identity, that is, the integral we wish to compute will equal to the Simpson's rule, S1, plus its error. Now we divide the interval AB into two equal subintervals and let the midpoint be C, which is A plus B over 2. The integral of f from a to b theoretically equals to the integral of f from a to c plus the integral from c to b, right? We can cut the interval into two pieces and integrate on each and sum it up. And then for each um, little integrals, on, on half of the interval here, we throw in the Simpson's rule. That will be Simpson's rule base 1 applied on the interval from a to c, plus its corresponding arrow, and the Simpson's rule on the interval from c to b, plus its corresponding arrow. Okay, so we're going to denote this by s2 plus e2, where this s2 simply equal to the sum of s1 here and s1 here. So as we wrote down here, that is a, a better approximation, the Simpson's rule with a grid size halved. And the corresponding arrow e2 will be this e1 plus that e1, so which we wrote here. And now, what are these e1s on these two subintervals? Well, they are basic Simpson's method on the interval ac and on the interval cb. Therefore, we have the formula, and that is the same formula here, where you have to fit in a cosi1 and a cosi2. That is, cosi1 lies on the interval a c and the cosi 2 lies on the interval from c to b. Now here comes an important assumption. We actually don't know, but we assume that the fourth derivative 
of f does not change too much. When the interval AB are small and the interval AC and CBs are even smaller, then cosi 1 will be very close to cosi 2. So this is some kind of a reasonable assumption. Okay? So if they are almost equal to each other, then we know that E1 over AC almost equal to E1 over CB. Okay, with that piece of information, we go back and look at the arrow E2 here. What is E2 here? E2 basically equal to twice of E1. Let's just choose interval AC. And then E1 on the interval AC is the arrow for the Simpson's rule with the grid size halved from the arrow here, right? So I will have a factor 1 over 2 to the fifth that comes from this 2 here, okay? And then cancel a, one, a 2 here with uh, 1 of the power here. I have 1 over 2 to the fourth, E1 over AB. Okay, let's summarize. So we know the integral equals to S1 plus E1. S1 we computed, E1 we don't know. And the integral also equal to S2 plus E2. S2 we computed, E2 we don't know, but we know E2 equals to 1 over 2 to the fourth of E1. Approximately, of course. Then we can subtract these two equations and get the following. S2 minus S1 will equal to E1 minus E2, and this will equal to 2 to the fourth E2 minus E2, which is 15 E2. Now this is actually a wonderful discovery. This says that I can have a good approximation to the arrow E2. If I divide this equation by 15 on both sides, I get this expression for the arrow E2. So remember, S1, S2 is something we just computed. And if, if we do the subtraction like this and divide it by a 15, this gives me a good approximation to the arrow E2. So two important usages for this discovery. One is, if now I have a, an arrow tolerance, let's say epsilon, you want the arrow to be less than epsilon on each sub-interval, then we can easily check if this is satisfied by this computation here, which I repeat here, to be less than epsilon. Okay, so this is called a priori error estimate. Second, I can use this to actually improve my result a lot. So if I add my arrow E2 on top of S2, I will get a much more accurate approximation to the integral. Okay, so let's do that. So E2 is just uh, this expression, S2 minus S1 over 15. I'll plug that in. It's a very, very cheap um, computation to do in the computer, and this will give you a much better result. And in fact, if you know that the fourth derivative of f almost equals to constant over those intervals, this actually gives you the best approximation. Okay, but of course, in general, it is not constant, but it's very small. So here, let's take a look at some pseudocode that can be used to code this recursive algorithm. So provided that the function f is given, and the interval a, b is given, and epsilon, a tolerance for arrow is given. So that's a tolerance at each sub-interval. Okay. So um, this is pseudocode, so it's not following um, any... Um, syntax of any particular language. It's just an algorithm. So I'm defining this function called Simpson. I send in f, I send in interval a, b, and I send in tolerance. And then I will compute s1 and s2 according to the formula. And then I will check s2 minus s1 in absolute value if it's less than 15 times the tolerance. That means it's good enough. So I will do one cheap computation, as we observed earlier. This will give the best result. So I do S2 plus its arrow, and then I return it in the answer.
Okay, and if not, then I will cut the interval into half again. I'll find the C, which is a midpoint, and then I call the Simpson's rule and sending in F A C, the left half of the interval, and then half of the error tolerance. And then I also call it again by sending in C B, that is the right half of the inter interval and the half of the error tolerance. Okay. And the eventual result here will be returned back to L left answer, and this one will be returned back to right answer. And then I'll add them up and then have it in the answer. Okay. So um this is a little bit difficult to imagine what happened because you are calling your function inside yourself. So it's kind of a many, many layers you keep digging. This kind of a function calling itself within itself is not allowed actually in MATLAB. But in other programming language, one can do that. And that's actually um, how these codes are done for those functions in MATLAB that uses this algorithm. It's coded in another language and then linked to MATLAB. Okay, so in MATLAB, um, you can call the function quad. That's basically the adaptive Simpson's rule. It does that. And then there is another quad eight. This is actually used even higher order method. So make sure to go to the help desk and figure out how to use those two functions. And you will need that for your homework. Okay, so here's a question for you. We designed the adaptive method using Simpson's rule. Now, you see the idea does not depend on the specific rule you use, right? Say, for example, I want to design an adaptive trapezoid method. How would you do that? Would you try it and work out a corresponding algorithm and the corresponding a priori error estimates? Well, one last comment will be, of course, since Simpson's rule has much higher accuracy, it's most commonly used, okay? even in the adaptive form. People normally go to Simpson's rules. Thank you.